Welcome to our segment on automation. In Cubase, you can automate virtually every parameter of your tracks, channels, plugins, and VST instruments. Let's start from the audio tracks controls. Press Show Hide Automation, and the Automation Subtract will appear. Choose the parameter from this drop down menu to click More and choose your desired parameter. Volume is a default parameter. Activate Read Enable. Select the Object Selection tool. And let's create three points on this blue line. Now grab the middle point and drag it down. In that little yellow rectangle, you can see our current position and volume level. The same information is also available on the info line. All right, let's play our track. You can select more than one point and move them simultaneously. Select the Draw tool, and let's redraw our line. You can use line tools as well. Let's draw a straight line. Parabola mode is next. But our parabola doesn't look very smooth. Let's fix it. Select File, Preferences, Editing, and then Adjust Automation Reduction Level. Click OK. Now our parabola looks much better. Sine creates sine curves. By holding the shift key, you can change the curve's period. And by holding the control or alt key, you can change the start and end point of the period respectively. Activate Snap Mode. Choose Grid from this drop-down menu. From the Grid Type menu, choose one of these three options. I'm going to use Use Quantize. Select your Quantize Type. And draw an automation line. Now you can see the Curve Cycle. It reflects the grid settings. To delete automation, you can use the Remove Parameters from this drop down menu, or you can select events by using the Object Selection or Range Selection tools and press Delete on your keyboard. You can also use the Erase tool. Select the range, and now you can move the automation, or hold the Alt key to copy it. Under the Edit menu, select Automation Follows Events. Now the automation we created will follow the event. For example, if I copy the selection to another track, the automation also gets copied.
Another method for creating automation is to record it. I'm going to load the Reverb plugin on my track. Right click, always on top. Click on plus, the plus sign, and from the drop down menu, choose Reverb Mix. Activate the Write Enable button, and presto, we are ready to record automations. When you finish and you're satisfied with your recording, deactivate the right button and then turn on lock. This is so you don't accidentally overwrite your automation. To disable automation reading, use the read enable button and to mute, use the mute button. You can choose different automation modes. Right click on the toolbar, select your automation mode. Cubase SX users have five modes to choose from, and SL users have only the touch fader mode. The touch fader mode works in this way Cubase starts to write automation as soon as you touch a control and stops when you release a control. Here you can set up the automation return time, that is, the time it takes the automation parameter to return to its previously recorded automation va value after you release the control. When the auto latch mode is selected, Cubase starts writing automation as soon as you touch a control. And after you release the control, Cubase will keep writing the automation at the release point level. Crossover mode works just like auto latch mode with one difference. As soon as you cross the previously recorded automation, Cubase will stop recording. Overwrite is another mode similar to the auto latch mode, the difference being that it works only for the volume fader and starts as soon as you start your playback. It keeps writing until you turn the write function off. Our last mode is the trim mode. It allows you to adjust the relative volume for the entire track. Or you can adjust the relative volume for a selected segment. Position your left and right locators. Turn on the right button. Choose Trim from the drop down menu. And move the volume fader up or down. And this concludes our segment on automation.